Bill, have you seen that movie Sixth Sense? I have, yes. That kid goes, I see dead people, right? That is, he does, well, yes. I see automation <laughs> and I see an audience watching right now. You're welcome for the dad joke. Did you roll your eyes? I had to roll my eyes at that one. That was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. So let's get into the automation, which is pretty good. It is great. It is absolutely yes. great. So automation in general, when we think about it, we're removing dull, dirty, dangerous. We're allowing yes. people to get back to their creativity. Ultimately, hopefully, we're profiting as well, becoming more efficient. And this grinding cell that's behind us, where have you seen some of this profitability and efficiency be applied? Sure. So um, when we went to implement this grinding cell, um, we had one operator, all three shifts running all three machines now we're down to one operator that manages all three on each shift so large labor reduction um, the other piece is we picked up some of it on uh, cycle time because the machine doesn't necessarily have to wait for the operator to finish gauging and doing stuff so we were able to pick up some extra time during there and then with the automatic gauging that's installed here which is what's happening right now the machines being comped by this gauge so it also helps reduce our quality issues to where if an operator is over comping the machine, we're scrapping a lot more parts. So you see it in efficiencies, you see it in labor, and you see it in quality. It's kind of across the board. This cell was a great opportunity to show all that. Yeah, and I like that you brought up that quality part because certainly you're not the only one. As the audience knows, as you know, we travel around the world doing these types of interviews, right? And I yes. see it all the time. And it's just a small piece where somebody makes a little compensation, but the compensation it's, doesn't work for the next part and the correct, next part. Correct. And so even though we fixed one, we scrapped 10. Correct, And exactly. this cell really does help with that overall quality, yes. doesn't it? Yes, it helps a lot with that overall quality. Because again, the, the gauge is making that decision and sending that signal. It's not operators making, ah, I think it's close enough, let's go ahead and do that, and then it goes way out of tolerance. And Bill, last time I was here, we had a conversation about overall, and I think this is industry-wide as well, we're all looking for quality people to come to work with us, right? Yes. We're always hiring. Always. And you mentioned that you're running three cells and one person's running three cells, and it used to be one per per machine, right? Yep. But at the same time, I would make the assumption, and we all know what assuming does, so I apologize for that, but I would make the assumption that it wasn't so much about a person losing their job and replacing one for each of the, one person to run all three of these machines. It was about a labor shortage in general and allowing other people to do other creative things within the company and do more for themselves and even probably get raises within the growth of themselves as well. When COVID hit in 2000 and demand really went down and um, people were laid off. Um, it, you know, you lost a lot of that workforce, especially the skilled labor. And then late 2000, early 21, when the demand came back, and it didn't come back light, it came back fast on everyone. Labor didn't want to come back to work necessarily. So we had to start thinking of other ways to get that labor in here. So yeah, it wasn't about laying people off to put these robots in. It was about, I need to have these machines running. And the only way I'm going to have these machines to run is by something in front of them. So we started coming up with more creative ways to do it. In fact, these cells, when we originally talked about this, the majority of the conversation was there's no way you're going to automate this. It can't be done because there's too much human interaction that needs done. And we were able to show through this and working with IC Automation that we were able to make that happen. So when that conversation came up with our friends over at IC Automation, they kind of look at you and go, hold my beer, I got this? You, more or less, <laughs> hold my beer. They said, I see a way to make this happen. I see, ah, <laughs> your joke is better than mine. Yeah, yeah. So to close this out, do you have a, a general number or idea of what your uptick in productivity has been, a percentage, how many more parts you're getting out, anything like that that you could throw at the audience sure, to yeah, close this it, out? Normally when we implement these, and this proved it, is our scrap was reduced. We probably reduced our scrap almost 50%, and our, up, our production went up 30% on these. And we see that across the board with most all automation that we do. It's usually about a 30% uptick in, in productivity on the cells. They don't take a break. They don't get sick. They, you know, they work around the clock. Well, it's time for us to take a break from this conversation. I, I, what do you I'm say? with you. We'll I'm let these you. robots Cheers. work and we'll move on. That's right. Cheers. All right, brother. Always a pleasure.